Ladies and gentlemen, most people know that I'm originally from Oklahoma. I've been in Texas almost seven years now, but that doesn't mean that the stuff going on in Oklahoma doesn't mean a lot to me because it does, okay? I still feel like that's my home, and it really pains me. It bothers me when I see this type of crap happening because it's stupid, it's avoidable, and I think that if we continue to keep having honest conversations like these, then maybe our sisters, our women of America, across the world, can start making better choices. Because in my opinion, the individual that you see on my screen is not a sane individual. He is not a good candidate for a father. He's not even a good candidate to be a human being. Okay? It's my personal opinion. But let me tell you this. Identities of Tuesday's fatal shooting have been released by the Muskogee, Oklahoma Police Department as the suspect remains behind bars. So as you guys can see, they did put his face. We're going to get his name out there here in just a moment. But I want you guys to understand partially what happened. That individual tried to murder this woman's five kids, and I think they got some kids together. He shot and murdered his own brother and then tried to murder the mom too. So that's like, what, seven people? So some of y'all have heard about this. I see y'all typing in the chat. So don't forget, click this thumbs up. Click that thumbs up. It'll share the stream and let more people know that we're live talking about this because I do want more people to be able to give their opinion. The five children, let me see if I can get their face on the screen for you so you can see. It's going to be a little hard to see. Let me see if I have a better picture than that. This one right here, boy, if this is not heartbreaking, I don't know what is. The five children slain in Tuesday's fatal shooting have been identified as one-year-old Jalea Prigion, three-year-old Jada, Jadis Prigion, and I'm sorry if I get these names wrong to the family and friends, I'm sorry, but these names are unique, and with unique names, they can be a little bit difficult to pronounce, so you got to understand. Five-year-old Harmony Anderson. Nevea Prigion, who is six years old, and that's, of course, heaven spelled backwards. Nine-year-old Cadence Anderson, and the children's mother has been identified as Brittany Anderson, who is on the far right-hand side, and she remains stable in a Tulsa hospital, and her condition was not released. But we do expect for her to survive, but I'm going to tell y'all, that's got to be very traumatic for a mother to not only be in this position and it's like i know a lot of times when you're in a relationship with somebody you don't have the foresight to see something like this happening you don't think that the person you're laying down with at night and every morning and living with could do something like this in all fairness to the mom you don't think that would happen but there was a big ass caveat are y'all ready to hear that caveat because y'all should be here to hear my opinion as opposed to the news. If you only came to hear the news, then I'm sorry. This ain't a news station. I'm not getting paid on a news station salary. So this ain't the damn news. This is just DJ Just J giving his opinion about what people are doing to these kids. Okay? That individual, that thug, that criminal actually has a rap sheet. What do I mean by that? This means that the mother could have done something as simple as a background check to know that this is not an individual that not only she should not be dealing with, bringing her kids around and be making kids with this individual. The adult male who was shot and killed is Javarion Lee, 24 years old, and he is the brother of the alleged shooter, Jaron Dejan Prigion. Jaron Dejan Prigion. That, that is a tongue twister. So this fool shot and killed his own brother, who I believe was one year younger than him. And I want to know from you guys, and we're just getting started. We're live right now. So if you guys are listening, we're just getting started. Please click that thumbs up. Share the stream because I want more people to hear about this. A bunch of y'all sent me the email because y'all wanted to hear my thoughts about this. I'm going to say some things that are not going to sit well with your sensibilities. 
this story is matter of fact both of these stories have uh something in common both of these stories have something in common and i want to know if y'all know what it is there is a hashtag of the afc that both of these stories have in common do y'all know which hashtag it is ah uh, damn that's strong Tried to get my voice right so I don't do all that coughing and stuff. Do y'all know which hashtag it is? Tracy's got it. Margie's got it. Hashtag when you date thugs, you date death. And that applies to both of these stories. And I'm going to point out to you why it applies. Prigion, who is 25 years old, again, he's a year older than his younger brother. How can you kill your younger brother? Like, let's pause on that. We'll come back. Prigion, who is 25 years old, is being held with no bond in the Muskogee County City Detention Facility on complaints of first degree murder and assault and battery with a dangerous weapon. Police say they captured Prigion at the deadly scene they captured him at the deadly scene everybody catch that he was on the scene where he committed these murders isn't that something they captured this dude on the scene a small residential home as he fled on foot when they arrived in response to a report of gunshots in the neighborhood at around 1.30 a.m. An officer fired a shot that missed the, sus the suspected shooter, but police quickly ran him down and arrested him. Police say that he was wielding a gun. Police found an adult male and four children dead at the scene. A wounded fifth child was also found in the home, but the child died after being transported to a Tulsa hospital. Police say that the shootings were not random. That part is very important. This is not a random shooting. He didn't just snap overnight and this happened, okay? They did not immediately know the motive, nor did they say if the suspected gunman was related to the victims. But y'all should know that y'all are here to get an opinion that the news won't give you. Do y'all want to know what my personal opinion is about this and why I believe he did it? Just hold that thought. We'll come back to it. School administrators say that they're providing grief counseling through the remainder of the week and urge children affected by the tragedy to seek assistance because a lot of these kids were already school age kids. Neana, let me see, ne, ne, Neoma Nitter, who lives across the street from the home, says she heard shots, gunshots, at about 1.30 a.m. and said she never saw anything unusual or noticed any traffic moving in or out of the house. Damon Smith, who lives a few houses down, said he regularly walked his dog and Katie Bell passed the residence. The kids were always waving at me, Smith said, adding that there were usually about three of them. It's a big shock. Now, if she's got five kids, why would it usually be three kids instead of all five? But let's hold off on that. Smith and Pamela Ruffface brought flowers to the property after they learned of the shooting deaths. Online court records show that the suspected gunman, Prigion, let me see if I can get his face up on the screen. This guy. Online records show that the suspected gunman was arrested in 2017 for larceny of an automobile. In February of 2019, he was charged with assault and battery with a dangerous weapon, threatening to perform acts of violence and misdemeanor malicious in injury to private property. In June of 2019, he was charged with obstruction resisting an officer, and possession of a controlled dangerous substance. Is that not the resume of a thug? Do I have this wrong? Am I judging that this individual wrong? 
Because I don't think I am. I think I'm calling this right exactly where it should be. Women are going are gonna to continue to keep paying the consequences of dealing with men just because they like these men and you put your kids around this man and the kids don't have a choice except to deal with who you put around them. And just because you might enjoy the pleasures that this thug individual delivers you, mom, it's not fair to your kids. And if you have kids, if you are a mother, then you got to start thinking outside of yourself. And that does not let this man off the hook because he could have presented himself as a good guy. And maybe the mom truly did not know. But like I say, that's part of where accountability is going to have to start is behind throwing like throwing criminals like this away. This type of dude, this type of individual, a quick background check would have told you all of his criminal background. And you could have made a solid choice and said, no, I don't need to be around this dude. But then here's another question. Why did he murder his brother? Ah, the plot thickens. Why did he murder his brother? Does anybody have an answer to that? I'll give you guys what my opinion is. It's merely an opinion. It doesn't mean it's a fact. My opinion is something set this thug off. Because I told y'all about the thug zoo and the thug lions. The women take their kids down to the thug zoo, put their kids inside the thug lion cage, and then get sad when the thug lion decides to maul the kids face off because that's just what thug lions do. Right? Something set this thug off. You know what I believe it was? I personally, and the mom can come out and debate this. It sounds like she's going to survive. So the mom can actually come and correct us if she believes that we're wrong. I think that the mom might have had a sexual relationship with his brother. Is that far-fetched? Because I don't think it is. What would set this dude off? He killed his brother because his brother was probably sleeping with his quote unquote woman. And then he went to take it out on the woman and took it out on the kids. Yes, it's a cowardice way to go out. But nonetheless, I believe that's what sparked this. But let me give you guys the fair usage. And y'all post in the comment section. Let me know what you guys think. Let's get it. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. Don't forget, guys, we're just getting started. Please click that thumbs up. Click that thumbs up. It'll help share the stream. Let more people know that we're live. Also, do not forget to support Aubrey's World. Please make sure you guys click on this video link that I'm posting in the comment section. That is a young girl and her father is actually watching the channel right now. So shout out to Aubrey's dad. But make sure and click that thumbs up and then come on right back to this video. All right, let's get it. In the U.S., police said six people were shot to death early on Tuesday at a home in Oklahoma, including five young children and a person who was suspected in the killing was taken into custody. In a press release, authorities said officers responded to about a th to about 1.30 a.m. local time call of multiple people shot at a home in Muskogee, a city of just under 40,000 people, about 72 kilometers southeast of Tulsa. Once there, officers encountered a person with a gun who was later taken taken into custody. Officers at the scene found one man and four children dead and a fifth child died at a Tulsa hospital. Authorities have not released the name of the person arrested or any details about the, per the person who died. Yeah, so starting with this morning's homicide, Muskogee police still have not confirmed if Jaron Pridgen is the father of the children killed. Again, three of them do have his last name. And J Pridgen's 24-year-old younger brother was also a victim, the lone adult victim in this homicide this morning. 
25-year-old Jerron Dijon Pridgen is in the Muskogee County Jail held without bond, suspected of killing five children all under the age of 10, and then his brother. Pridgen's criminal history includes three felony charges, the first in July 2017, larceny of an automobile. In February 2019, two more felonies, one of them assault and battery with a dangerous weapon, that weapon a piece of cement, according to court documents. In June 2019, Pridgen was charged with three misdemeanors, obstructing and resisting an officer and possession of a controlled dangerous substance. The affidavit says Pridgen was separating two people involved in domestic abuse. Then it says Pridgen wouldn't give his name to the responding police officer and ran away. Pridgen was later found with marijuana in his pocket. The affidavit closes with saying Pridgen had two active felony warrants. Currently, Muskogee police say they don't have info. Whoa, let's back that up. Like a U-Haul truck. They said he had active warrants. Are y'all hearing this? The affidavit says Pridgen was separating two people involved in domestic abuse. Then it says Pridgen wouldn't give his name to the responding police officer and ran away. Pridgen was later found with marijuana in his pocket. The affidavit closes with saying Pridgen had two active felony warrants. This fool had two active felony warrants. Please guys, let's not skip that huge ass detail. Not one, but he already had two active felony warrants. But I'm, I'm going to always have somebody in the comment section, somebody in the family going to come out and tell me how what I'm saying is wrong. And he's a good boy. And he's never going to do nothing like this. He had mental illness. None of this is his fault. I raised him to be a good boy. He a good boy on the inside. There's always somebody who comes out and defends these thugs, but they forget all about the children, which is the focus of this story, okay? Two active felony warrants. Let's keep going. Currently, Muskogee police say they don't have information on Pridgen's past that can be released. They're currently focusing on the victims involved in this morning's tragic murders. Jaron Pridgen's arraignment was this afternoon here by video conference at the Muskogee County Courthouse. The court will release an affidavit tomorrow and Pridgen will be back in court again also tomorrow. I'm Sierra Pizarro, two works. When they arrived on scene, they encountered a suspect leaving the residence with a gun in his hand. One of our officers shy fired at that suspect, missing him. The suspect ran off. He was shortly apprehended after a short foot chase. When officers went inside the scene, they discovered four small children had been shot and one adult male. There was another female that was taken to the hospital with another small child. And they were both life flighted to a Tulsa hospital. where that small child also was pronounced deceased. We don't believe that it's random, but we just don't have details yet of, of the, the why or what happened. Uh, today I charged Jaron Pridgen with six counts of murder. One day after the tragedy in Muskogee, the suspect, 25-year-old Jaron Pridgen, in court, also charged with shooting with intent to kill and possessing a firearm while on probation for the deaths of five children and his younger brother. Today, the Muskogee community coming together to mourn their loss in prayer, trying to heal from the wounds inflicted on them when shots rang out Tuesday morning. Two Works for You, Sierra Pizarro, is live in Muskogee tonight with how the young victims are being honored. Sierra. I'd say a couple hundred people attended the prayer vigil here in Muskogee and more than 900 donors have surpassed the $35,000 mark in the online fundraiser to help pay for the children's funeral expenses. They were only two, three, five, six and nine years old at the time of their deaths. A community stricken with grief. 
God, today we need you. Prayer is what Muskogee now relies on. We will remember the loss of life that we've experienced here in Muskogee. The quiet of this neighborhood shattered by gunshots early Tuesday morning. I shed tears of sorrow because being responsible for the well-being of more than 37,000 residents included the lives of those five children. Five children and one man killed. That man's older brother, Jaron Pridgen, is charged for the murders. Do you have your family in your prayers? And for what he did, he failed as a father. Brittany Anderson, the children's mother, recovers in a Tulsa hospital and is now awake and aware. Uh, she does know that uh, her babies are, are gone, but she's just thanking God that she's here and, uh, you know, and working her way through this tragedy. We're all working through the tragedy. There's still the question of motive. Why? Why would somebody do this? We're not going to talk about a motive. The issue on the uh, death penalty will be made at a later date once the investigation is complete. Jaron Pridgen is due back in court February 18th. Police say Pridgen himself called 911 following the incident. And Muskogee County District Attorney also announced that they will be helping with the funeral expenses and counseling if needed by the family. I'm Sierra Pizarro, two works for you. Actually, I don't think they're going to need to help with that at all. You guys know why? One small thing that you guys forgot. I just knew that the AFC was going to catch this. Go fund me. Yes, yes, yes. There was a go fund me. Would you guys like to take a look at the go fund me? that is currently up. Let me see if I can find it. Put it on the screen. Here it is. I thought somebody would have caught it by now. I was just gonna wait and see if you guys would have remembered to ask, but it's okay. Here is the GoFundMe. The GoFundMe is to, I, Britney's Angels Funeral Expenses. But I want you guys to remember, there were five kids. That is a lot of kids. That is a lot of burials. That is a lot going on there. But y'all know how I feel about that GoFundMe, right? So, so this is where some of y'all might get upset about what I'm about to say. Thank you, Miss June Bennett. Thank you, Miss June Bennett for posting the GerberLife.com link. The reason for that is because we need to start getting life insurance on our kids. Everybody in America, and, and I don't know how it works across the world. Sorry about my coffin. I'm still struggling a little bit. But I think that everybody, at least in America, for at least for what I can speak for, should have life insurance. Whether you're old or young, whether you just had kids, teenagers, whatever. Everybody should have life insurance. If you want to get life insurance on your kids, it's very cheap and very easy to get on GerberLife.com. At least make an effort. Because in this case, this mother not had not only not one, not two, not three, not four, but five children. I know people say, well, when you first have a kid, it's difficult. They don't have a social security number yet, so I can't get life insurance on them. Well, after each kid, or in between each kid, you have at least nine months of gestation of producing a kid. You can't tell me that you can afford to have five kids, but can't afford life insurance on those five kids. This is part of what people going to get mad. I get it. I understand. But I'm simply speaking an opinion because I believe that it is highly irresponsible for us to continue to keep using crowdfunding and hoping that people will continue to have their heartstrings plucked and feel sorry about the situation that you brought on yourself and your kids. I'm going to say that again. Let me say that 
again for the people sitting in the back room. This is where my opinion tends to get me in trouble with people. The mother put not only herself, but her children in the presence of a thug, procreated with a thug, and died by the thug. You live by the thug, die by the thug. Hashtag stupid is a stupid thugs. Hashtag when you date thugs, you date what? You date death. That means it's a dangerous game to play with somebody who has not one, but two active felony warrants. And had a nerve to make kids by this dude. But they opened up this GoFundMe nonetheless for a $35,000 goal. They got five kids. You know, I, I get it. But they've raised $41,000 so far. But yes, that was a GoFundMe. Now, let's keep going. The tragedy started playing out shortly after 1.30 a.m. Police received a frantic 911 call. All I know is the call came in from a cell phone. I don't know who made that call at this time, um, but it was a call stating that there had been people shot in the, inside the residence, several people shot inside the home. As officers rushed to the scene, they saw a man leaving the home with a gun. At least one officer fired at the suspect, but missed. He was caught a short time later. Sorry, sorry. Somebody in the chat caught it and guess the mom knew that he was a thug and guess that's why I'm putting some of the onus on the mother. Now we're still going to have to hold this thug accountable for what he did to not only his family but his brother but mom did not have to lay down with this dude. Police found inside was gut-wrenching. Shock, disbelief, a great deal of sadness. A child and woman were flown to a Tulsa hospital. That child would later die. The woman, police say, regained consciousness. Later in the morning, investigators went to great lengths to block the heartbreaking scene of the victims being carried out of their home. Police say the suspect, Jerron Pridgen, isn't talking. I haven't had contact with him. I just know that there was an attempt made, as there would be in an investigation like this, and he has chosen to not cooperate with the investigation at this time. Unbelievable story out of Oklahoma. Six people, including five young children, shot and killed. Horrific massacre. Take a look uh, at, the, at the crime scene here. This is horrible in this neighborhood. Uh, what happened inside that home, unthinkable. To now, this commentary, and shout out to him. I am using this by way of fair use, but I don't want to uh, take too much of his content. But... Like I say, he's pretty much going to reiterate a lot of the things that I've already talked about. But here's a couple things that, again, the news and no other people talking about these stories is going to say. How about this? What is the root cause of this? Does anybody know what the root cause is? Because in any ish situation, you always want to go to the root. So the first uh, thing in troubleshooting is to identify identify the problem i come from the tech support world the first thing you do is identify what the problem is the root cause of this is creating thugs and procreating with thugs so first and foremost i said for moist but y'all get it first and foremost how do you create a thug these thugs are created uh, by single parent households, usually single mother households in low income communities. And for some reason, even though we ain't got a lot of money, we tend to keep having a lot of kids. I don't understand how that works, how we, we become less responsible, the less money we have in the black community specifically, right? Seems like the way that's, it's been working that way since oh the eighties. Some of the 70s, but definitely since the 80s. The less money we have, the more financial responsibilities we create as a culture. When these young men, these young boys, don't have a father figure in their life, they don't have an example. They don't know what to grow up and become. Therefore, they don't find the full value in themselves more times than none. 
So then if they don't value themselves, they're not going to value anybody else. They're not going to value the rest of the world. Then they're going to wreak havoc on the rest of the world, which is how you get these thugs. Now, after the fact, now that these thugs are created, how many of these stories am I going to have to do to keep begging my sisters specifically to stop dating and procreating with thugs? Because now you're just exacerbating a problem. I haven't used that word in a long time. You're exacerbating a problem. Not only are we in low income, high crime rate neighborhoods, but we're making kids that we can't afford, let alone the fact that we're probably on Section 8, food stamps, child support, all kind of freaking help that we need in order to take care of these human beings. But then you bring a man into the picture who can't do shit for you. How does that make any sense? How can we call our sisters queens? They should be uplifted. They should be supported no matter what. They are infallible. That is not how you get your community to a higher plateau. By telling people some bull crap. You tell people the truth. Because I want people to have this thing called discernment to see what's wrong. That way we can stop making the same jacked up choices over and over and over again. I'm sorry, ladies, but there are enough decent men out there in the world. Y'all don't have to keep laying down with these niggas that ain't shit. I hope I can say that and I hope that's okay with y'all with me and my language. I'm sorry if some of y'all can't deal with that. There is enough good men out there, and here's what happens. The thugs seem to get all the sex. There's a few people in the chat that might understand what I'm talking about. Maybe not everybody does. The thugs have no issue getting all the sex they want, laying down with some woman, and laying up in her house around her kids. If I'm saying something that don't apply, then let it fly, okay? It's not all, it's not all, but it's too damn many. And thank you. I see some ladies out there supporting. They understand. They're putting the prayer hands up. They're putting the thumbs up. So some people get it. We have to ask ourselves, how do we get here? Because this woman already had kids before she got with this dude, got with this dude, and made more kids by a thug now she's stuck with this thug. She tried to break up. I repeat. The reason why he snapped is because she tried to break up with him. Now why he shot and killed his brother is beyond me. I would have to assume that maybe he believed his brother was sleeping with this woman. That's the only thing that makes sense. But again, we tend to look at everything else as the problem except for the purveyors of violence. I don't think I've ever used that word purveyor before. <laughs> oh, man. The purveyors of violence are the people who allow it and enable it. The enablers. Because guess what? If you cut this man off, you don't give this man an opportunity, then you don't allow him into your home and you don't allow him around your children. He does not have an opportunity to do this heinous act and that's what i'm saying to my sisters and i think that's why so many people so many women do understand they listen with their heart they hear with their minds and they listen with their heart and they understand where i'm coming from because i love you guys and i care about y'all and i do not want to see y'all self-destruct and i for damn sure don't want to hear about our sisters being lost to dudes who are worth nothing this dude was worth nothing. He lived a life of crime. He was going nowhere. And he eventually was going to end up in jail or dead. So why put yourself around somebody like that? That's why I say hashtag. When you date thugs, you date death. You're flirting with the possibility that something's going to go wrong for you and your kids. Let me say this. And this is going to seem very insensitive. Okay. To the mom, Brittany Anderson, why have five kids? 
Uh oh, I think I might get in trouble for this one. I'm just asking a question. I'm not trying to make anybody in the chat upset. I'm just asking a question. This is what y'all come for, right? Y'all come to hear me be honest, right? Thank you, Tracy Walker Talk TV, and shout out to you. Said he had nothing to lose, including his own kids. Thank you. Why have five kids? I thought the point and purpose of having children to begin with was to leave a legacy, to raise a family as a unit. But we continue to keep only having kids for the benefits that we can collect from these kids. And what do we call that here at the AFC? Hashtag babies for benefits. Because I can't see why a mother in this type of situation will continue to keep having kids. Something should have let you know that this man was violent, that he was wanted, that he had a record, but you didn't take time to find out and it ended up costing not only all of your babies, but it almost cost you your life and then he ended up killing his own damn brother. I'm sorry, but that is just a human being that don't, this dude don't need to exist on this earth anymore. His time is done. His time is over. And here's my last question about this particular story before we move on to our next story, which is just as bad. To my ladies, to my beautiful sisters out there, how many more of these stories am I going to have to do? Am I going to have to wake up to my email going from 25 brand new emails to 50 brand new emails to just this morning? I ended up with 100 brand new unread emails. All of these are different stories. How many of these stories am I going to have to do before these ladies wake up and, and get out of these situations or don't choose to put yourself in this situation? You have to start loving yourself, which comes within. That's where the self-esteem comes in. It don't come from you posting memes on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, posting pictures of your ass all day long on your stories. It don't come from, from people giving you empty comments about how good you look and how bright your smile is and all of that good stuff. It comes from real self-worth within. We have to learn to value ourselves as men and women. And whenever we start to have a value, we set the bar really high. And I like to shout out the people who are in the chat who set the bar really high. And we don't just take anything. I don't just lay down with any woman. I don't just be in a relationship with any woman. And I for damn sure ain't about to put my daughter around just any woman. I love myself too much and I love my legacy too much to do something like that. We got to start being selfless and stop being selfish. I'm going to say that again. We have to stop being selfish and learn to be selfless. We need to all learn to be leaders. We can never have enough leaders. We can never have enough leaders. We all need to be leaders. And I really hope, I don't know what this, I'm going to be honest, guys. I don't know what this mom is going to do when she recovers. She lost all five of her kids. I just don't know how you fix that. There's no amount of money. There's no amount of time that will fix that. And these are some beautiful babies. Y'all look at these pictures, man. I'm going to see if I can find a couple more pictures of these babies. It's a real shame. I think I got a couple more pictures in here. Especially this one. An innocent day out at the store. Y'all look at those beautiful bright smiles. These babies did absolutely nothing to deserve what they got. Just because that dude decided to lose his damn mind. And have him a little hissy fit. And a big ass temper tantrum. Those babies deserve better than that. We're going to continue to keep giving our children a voice. Until we stop putting our children in these situations. To those young princes and young princesses, young babies, RIP. 
they could have grown up to become anything. This is so sad. And I truly hope that her boyfriend gets his issue, not only in jail, but if they sentence him to death, it is what it is. Make sure y'all share this story. If there's any more to follow up with, I promise you we will follow up on it. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Click the thumbs up, okay? Because we got a lot more to talk about on this channel, okay?